Good morning. I'm Terry Hyland, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. I know with being live streaming, we're having people from California to Pennsylvania to Florida to Maine, and some in Chicago. So glad you're with us. Today we talk about our gospel reading about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. The Apostle John, the son of Zebedee and brother of James, who is also called the Sons of Thunder, writes to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Son of God and that all who believe in him shall have eternal life. Our gospel reading bears that out. John 10, verse 9. I am the gate of the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. This is our Lord talking. This is not an apostle. This is not someone giving his advice. This is God through Jesus talking to you and to me. Therefore, it must be true. So let's look at this. Jesus uses the analogy of the shepherd and the sheep. Now I'm guessing that none of you have been a shepherd and have sheep. I haven't. So let's look at this. How do you get the sheep into the sheep pit where they'd be detracted by the, by the shepherd? Well, there's a gate. And the first thing you have to do is open the gate because the gate is normally closed. So the shepherd opens the gate to which the sheep can enter. And in this analogy, Jesus is talking about heaven and the kingdom of God. Jesus opens the gate to the kingdom of God for the sheep. Unfortunately, you and me were the sheep. The sheep can't jump over the fence. They need the gate to be opened. They hear his voice and they come. He stands ready to protect them. He is there offering safety and security. He knows them by name with each one having a different personality just like you and me. Jesus is our way to salvation and safety for all of eternity. Let me use an event that happened to me that kind of bears this out. When I lived on a farm and I was 10 years old, I volunteered to the farm next to us to work at the dairy farm. And they had about 100 head of cattle cows, milking cows, and they would milk them in the morning, usually about 5 a.m., and then again around 5 p.m. again. The farmer allowed me to work carrying milk cans from the dairy barn into the milk house, where the milk cans would be lifted up and placed into an ice-cold well water until a big milk truck came the next morning to pick them up. Now the farmer, at a quarter to five, would stand at the door, open the door, and call the cows to come in. The cows would hear his voice, and they'd come in. I always wondered about that. They would hear his voice, they would come running, literally running to come in. Well, two things would happen then. They'd come in, they'd go to their right stall, the one that they've always gone to, to get milked and also to get some special grain that was placed in front of them. Wow. After a while, I kind of wondered, gee, 
Could I do that? I had listened to how he did it. And every farmer had a special call. And his went something like, Come, bosse, 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 come, bosse. Man, they would lift up their heads and they'd start running. Wow. So I said, said to him, um, could I do that? He said, oh, sure. Help yourself. So I stepped up and I opened the door one, one morning and I stood out there and I went, come, bosse, bosse, bosse. The cows didn't even lift up their heads. What's with this? Maybe my intonation wasn't right, so I tried it again. Come, bosse, bosse, bosse. Nothing. The farmer stood back behind me and he was going, He said, what am I doing wrong? And he said, they don't know your voice. Well, what do you mean? I thought my intonation and, and saying the right words, he said, no, 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 they don't know your voice. They know me, they don't know you. Wow. They only knew the voice of the one who fed them and take care of them and milked them. What voice do you listen to? Is it the worldly voices around us or is it God's voice speaking to us through the Bible, through worship services, through some friends? And what is that telling you? Very simply, love God and love your neighbor. Are you listening to God's voice, the one who knows you and is calling to you? Call out to God, too, because God knows your voice. God knows everything about you. God knows your trials, your tribulations, your challenges. God knows what you're going through with this COVID-19. God is there with you. God knows everything about you. All your sin, all your whoopses, your trials, your and your blessings. He knows you personally because God created you how? in his image. You are created in the image of God. And God sent his son to die for you, to take your sins away, to bless you, and to welcome you ultimately into the kingdom of God. Not just when you die, but here on earth, now. Come and join the kingdom of God. For God loves you so much. You are his precious child. He's waiting for you to call to him. And he will answer. Let us all live our life loving God and showing love towards our neighbor. Amen. I'd like to do something a little different now. All you adults can uh, just sit down or go in the other room. But I'd like all the children out there to come and to listen, because this is called a children's sermon. Now, I suppose you adults can listen too, but uh, this is primarily for children. Today I'm going to quote some of the popular phrases for some of the, the characters, that, the famous characters you know about. And after I say a phrase, 
I want you to answer that you know it. Not by raising your hands, now, quite frankly, I can't see that. But what I'd like you to do is ba like sheep. Ba, ba. So, let's see. The first phrase is someone said, let's go to infinity and beyond. Who said that? Here's a clue. It was said by Buzz Lightyear. You know him? Remember him? Well, us older folk don't, but you youngins do. Okay. Here's another one, and there's a clue in the words, too. There are just some people who are worth melting for. There are some people who are just worth melting for. Who said that? I'm hearing some bahas. Yep, it was Olaf. It was Olaf who said that. Very good. All right, here's another one. There's a clue in the words, too. In life, just keep swimming. Who said that? Hmm. I'm hearing some bahs again. Yep. Yep. It was Dory who said that. Just keep swimming. And sometimes we have to just keep swimming in life. All right, here's, now this is my favorite one. This is my favorite and I'll try and do an accent that, that he said too. Me want cookie. Who said that? I think you adults even know who said that one. Yeah, I'm hearing lots of bars. There it is, Cookie Monster. Oh boy, I love cookies too, just like him. Well, let's turn our attention and not talk about cartoon characters. Oh, I got one more, I forgot about that. It's another one. That's one person who said, and you adults probably know this one too, in every job there must be done, there is an element of fun. Who said that? Now if I had an umbrella and I held the umbrella up, that would be a clue. Who said that? Who said that? Yep, you're right again, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Now, Let's turn attention to someone who is real. Someone who's real and um, was alive and still is, says, love one another as I have loved you. Who said that? Was it Mary Poppins? It wasn't Buzz Lightyear or Olaf or Dory or Cookie Monster. Yes, you're right. Lots of Oz out there. It was Jesus. Jesus said to love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is not a cartoon character. Jesus is real. He's the good shepherd who takes care of us. Jesus said that he knows his sheep, and his sheep know him, and he knows your voice. See, Jesus knows everything about you, and that's the good news. And he loves you beyond your wildest dreams. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you help us and hear us and help us know Jesus' voice. 
We want to follow you today and always. In Jesus' name, amen.